infrastructure that you can make is something that can't just be done with spiking or just with um, teasing. Uh, this is something that is, looks so weird and so animal uh, that you really need some kind of structure underneath your layer. Um, so like this one, for instance, here's a structure here, here's a structure here, um, and here's a structure at the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sure, I could maybe tease that. Do I want to? No. That's a terrible idea. I probably need like four wigs in order to put that kind of volume in. Um, the goal of putting an understructure in of some kind is to save yourself on the fiber. I'm going to take something super light. Um, I personally like to use styrene. Can Styrofoam. Hmm? Styrofoam. Yes, yeah, styrofoam. You said don't use styrene. <laughs> um, I, use, I like to use styrofoam personally because I'm pretty confident at carving it, but you can use pretty much anything, honestly. Um, stiffened felt is actually awesome if you need to do a spike or a cone. Um, I did not know it existed. It's great. Um, that's good. I've seen people use wire, like chicken wire. I don't really know how that would work personally. Um, I've used acrylic. Like you can use anything. Expanding foam. Uh, to, to yeah, expanding foam. I didn't have to work with that though. That was just being silly. Um, anything that is lighter than a wig is going to solve your problem. And the idea of that is that you'll attach the understructure to the wig in some fashion and then lay fiber over it so you wouldn't know that the thing is under there. Um, so like in this case, with the top, the top examples, these are all wigs and my cruddy little first grade tracing of the shape is the shape of the foam that is underneath the wig. Um, so with the one on the left, it was a large shape coming off the back. Um, you can see it kind of in the bottom when it looked up finally. With rows in the middle, uh, there is a large bump on the top. Um, and with the cloud wig over there, it was a big hole in the middle. Um, and the bottom, the bottom picture actually is what the rose wig uh, bump thing looked like before I actually attach it to the wig itself. Uh, like I said, I like to use um, styrofoam. That's just me, though. I also like to cover it in felt. I actually find that it's the the fiber sticks a bit better uh, with the felt on. But you know, again, lots of ways to do this stuff. It's just a question of what you uh, experiment with and like the best. Um, so when you go and when I go and I attach these structures, um, what I like to do is first, if I can, cover it in, in your fiber. It's not necessary to do that, uh, but I find personally that I'm a bit cleaner um, when I cover it first. Uh, but then, regardless of whether it's covered or not covered, I will then attach to the wig in some fashion. Um, I've done stitching, like you can actually sew in around the edges of, of your little structure to the netting of the wig. Mostly though, I use hackwood, because again, <laughs> I'm lazy and it's fast. And also my head is shaped really strangely, so I find that when I put it on that mannequin head and I glue it on, it doesn't look the same on me. So I'll actually put it on my head and then stick the thing to my head. But if you have a normal shaped head, you probably don't have to do that. <laughs> um, but even after you stick it on with hot glue, uh, you can uh, stitch it in just to secure it if you think that um, it might be a problem. Put something under the webs if you're putting hot glue on your head. Oh yeah, if you do, if you do my <laughs> terrible hot glue method, make sure you put a piece of felt uh, under your wig cap first so that you don't get hot glue on your head. Caution. Like that Safety. Yeah, safety first. Safety first. Um, so with the, with the structure, um, just, I'm just kind of just kind of at this one. This is this is actually a before and an after. So the first one is uh, when I went to make Rose's wig. Rose's wig is tall and wide. Um, so I added the top bump, and then I added the structures of the ringlets out uh, that way. Um, so it, just just to give it both the tall and the wide shape. The ringlets are um, uh, interface. Uh, yeah, they're they're an interfacing, uh, and then we curled it up into a drill curl, and that was also attached to the wig face. Um, when you add the kind of understructure, though, also kind of try and keep it balanced. If you keep it really back, uh, too too back heavy or too side heavy, you're going to have a trouble keeping it on your head. 
you can put in combs and you can put in hairpins to help, but if you can avoid that and save yourself the trouble, um, it's, going, it's going to be a lot easier for you in the future. Um, so for covering, right on the other side of this, yeah, here we go, I knew I did that. Um, for covering the thing in the hair, uh, like I said, you can put it on beforehand, you can go on after, so it doesn't matter. I like to do it beforehand because I like my method of securing it to the bottom part of the structure where you're not going to see the thing because it's going against my head. Um, so in this case, this is that weird fish wig. I harvested a bunch of the fiber off of the wig using the method where I pulled the webs off um, just because I really didn't have a lot of hair to work with. And also, the structure is going on the top, so who cares if there's no hair up there? Doesn't matter, no one's going to see it. Uh, so we pulled the wefts off of the wig. I then created the uh, foam under structure and covered it in the right color felt. And then I began to attach the hair. Um, using that hot glue method where you glue one end securely to the very bottom and then using tacky glue and not to be to smooth it over the entire structure itself. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. You know, again, harkens back to lots of types of glue, and it just depends on what method you like to use. Um, and I've done all of these to varying degrees of success. You can take a hunk of hair, you can hot glue it, and then you can go loop and stick it in the hot glue. And because you've got so much hair, you can't see the hot glue from the top. Um, that works, but the problem is, is that the middle piece of hair that, that did not get the hot glue and is not getting the got to be layer that you're putting on the very top, that middle piece is super open and free. Um, so you could probably do something like that on a flat or very slightly curved structure where you're then securing the other end down so that both ends are secure and there's really no other middle fiber to go. But on a complicated structure like this, especially one where one end is totally open like, and also there's a bunch of complex curves in this kind of uh, wave shape, it's really hard to get those free middle pieces to not pop off. Um, and the result is you get something with a lot of flyaways. Like if you've ever seen a wig with just pieces of individual hair kind of sticking out going every which way, um, that is one way to avoid it making sure that you either pin both ends down super securely or making sure that you go a bit slower and that every single piece is covered in glue. Um, if you're going the both ends method, I really, really recommend making sure that your fiber is long enough. Um, the worst thing in the world is if you are putting something over a structure and you do it right and you put the hot glue on one end and you put the hot glue on the other end and you're so proud of yourself and there's still pieces sticking up, and you're like, why is this happening? And it's because my weft, even though it's this long, some of the fiber is tapered. Like, you know how if you look at the bottom of a wig, how it doesn't just bluntly end in one spot, it's like naturally cut into layers? And you take that without realizing how short it is, you could end up with some of those shorter layers of hair popping up because they're not secured on the longer. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiber over the foam. Um, like I said, I've done it both ways, and I'm not gonna lie, doing it weft by weft is just makes me so much less angry at myself uh, when I do it. Um, and it, it does actually make it look quite clean in the end, just because you have a lot more control when you're working with something that small, as opposed to a big old hunk of hair. Where how am I going to control where like 200 strands of hair are going? 